spitting a little snow but not enough to even talk about really hope you're all doing well out there holding together got Danny Woodman to my right to my far right mr. Dan D Caldwell behind the how-to bench hello there everybody is. got some good stuff on the bench today we're gonna be showing you sharing a little bit of how to uh, and also asking for your input uh, on how you do what we're going to be showing. Um, got a cool song from Danny. You know, if you've been watching for a while, you know that he ventures further out into musical genres than certainly than I do. Um, and this is going to be a, a alternative rock yeah. anthem from the 90s. Yes, our high school days. Yeah, the band Blind. Giving away our age. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a little old. Yeah, so my, my, uh, my college songs, days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's my favorite one-hit wonder, I believe. Uh, yeah, I think it's a one-hit yeah. wonder. Live oh, had they, more than yeah, they, they did. Were, they were Actually, okay, speaking yeah. of live, Shane, the guy, the front man from Live, is uh, Chad Taylor, I believe. He's from around York, Pennsylvania. Mm. Shane actually knows. Him. Yeah, <laughs> somebody <laughs> mentioned that on Facebook. Yeah, probably Shane. Yeah. He's a mentioner of things. <laughs> um, so yeah, Danny's going to do that. I've got a couple of songs. Don't have your comments pulled up yet, because, you know, why would you do that before the show Don't starts? Don't get last week's show. Just figured I'd tell you. Every now. time, right? I get the wrong show. I, the iPad wants to update. It's all gone to crap. So we're glad. We trust you're here, <laughs> out there, somewhere. Yeah, um, everyone's here. Rob Robel, Lou yeah. Ma, Shane, Shane. You know, Tim Anderson. Hi, Bobby Jim. Joe Phoenix Turner turning in. Hey there. So, uh, we might as well start with, with something we've been talking about. We've been on a sea shanty kick lately uh, for, for the past few weeks. And me finally watching, myself finally watching the, the movie Fisherman's Friends, for me at least, kicked it up a notch. Of course, Danny's been singing sea shanties for years. Our good buddy Dan D. Caldwell over there, his grandfather... Great grandfather. Great grandfather was the commandant, the commander of the 
Coast Guard. Coast Guard station. He's born yep. and raised in Portsmouth, which is a good old uh, seafaring town. So this area of New Hampshire has a strong uh, history, you know, a strong uh, tradition. Relationship with the sea. With the sea. Earth. Arr. The sea. Sure, and it is. All right. I think Ooh, I've got. Isn't a pineapple under the sea? SpongeBob. <laughs> that too. Nickelodeon will come after us. <laughs> oh, yeah. oops. Oh, yeah. You don't mess with Nickelodeon or Disney. <laughs> Sorry. So let it go. All right. So we're going to do a, a shanty, one of the better known ones. And I would hope it's got a very simple verse and melody structure, a lot of repetition. So feel free to sing along at home or wherever you happen to be with us. Um, Dan, you could come over and, and pop on a, a stool. Nick, I don't know if you want to come hover or stay over there. You'll hear him. He's got his own microphone. Oh, you gotta make. All right, so this is Roll the Old Chariot Along. There he is. There we are. I got Captain Captain Her. Deke in the, in the shop. Captain Gray there. All right. Well, we'd be all right with the wind in our sails. We'll be all right with the wind in our sails. We'll be all right with the wind in our sails. And we'll all hang on behind. And we'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll the old. Chariot along, and we'll all hang on behind. Well, a drop of Nelson's blood wouldn't do us any harm. No, a drop of Nelson's blood wouldn't do us any harm. Well, a drop of Nelson's blood wouldn't do us any harm. And we'll all hang on behind. And we'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll the old. Chariot along, and we'll all hang on behind. Well, just one glass of rum wouldn't do us any harm. Just one glass of rum wouldn't do us any harm. Just one glass of rum wouldn't do us any harm. And we'll all hang on behind. And we'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll the old. Chariot along, and we'll all hang on behind. Well, one night ashore wouldn't do us any harm. Singing one night ashore wouldn't do us any harm. Well, one night ashore wouldn't do us any harm. And we'll all hang on behind. And we'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll the old. Chariot along, and we'll all hang on behind. Well, a night with the girls wouldn't do us any harm. Said a night with the girls wouldn't do us any harm. Just one night with the girls wouldn't do us any harm. And we'll all hang on behind. And we'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll the old. Carry it along, and we'll all hang on behind. Well, one night back at sea wouldn't do us any harm. One, one night, night back at sea, sea wouldn't do us any harm. Well, one, one night back at sea wouldn't do us any harm. And we'll all hang on behind. And we'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll the old chariot along. We'll roll. Share it along, and we'll all hang on behind. Well, there you go. Good old sea shanty there. <laughs> all right. So, what's next? I don't know. A um, couple of new things to talk about, I guess. It's as good a time as any. Uh, last week, I talked a little bit about decals and decals. So you can... Over there. Go back over there. <laughs> Dan, trying to, get out trying of the way. to stay out of the camera shot there. <laughs> so I mentioned that I had a new version of the tax stamp decals on the way. This is a full sheet. I'll come a little closer. There's a song in that. All right. Here you go. Boom. Yeah. Small, 
medium, and one big one. So, a little bit different from how we've been selling them for, only had them listed for a few weeks, um, but these are all individually scored. So you can pull these individual stickers off, these decals off, and put them on your cigar box guitars or other crafts, cover up warning labels, cover up scuffs, dings, mistakes. Uh, this bigger one you can really cover up a lot with if you so choose, but it's, it's high grade, very durable, vinyl, polypropylene, actually, decals. So the first of many decal designs. That Susan. Susan, decals, she wants. Hi, Sue. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> it's nice to get positive feedback, isn't it? Um, so that just hit uh, just earlier today. Two new things have been listed on the CB Giddy page that I'm pretty excited about. And I know some of you will be too because you've been asking for these things for a long time. Dan, not Danny. Well, you've been out in the shop working on things too, but Mr. Mm -hmm. Caldwell over there has been busy out in the shop today making necks. Oh, I forgot I could zoom in. Zoom! Zoom? I thought I was here to chat. <laughs> Chit chat. So you might notice that this neck looks a little different from some of our others. This is a 17-inch scale tenor ukulele, what we call a kit neck, pre-drilled four holes for tuners for a ukulele, uh, 16 frets, chromatically fretted, uh, zero fret on there for nice low action, and they are now available from CB Giddy. Now, we've also put one of these new necks to good use. RJ yesterday out in the shop put together this pretty little thing. I posted a, a photo on the CB Giddy page yesterday. This is indeed a tenor ukulele. Four strings, standard uke tuning, GCEA. Nice printed box there. We got that old Sailor Jerry style tattoo. Navy girl art on there. to have a line of, uh, we're calling them the vignette series of tenor ukes. Vignette, the old artistic term for, you know, interestingly uh, portrayed graphics. I think technically vignette is when there's a photo or an image and it, it kind of fades, fades out, either yeah. gets lighter or darker towards the edges. And there will be some designs. Uh, there's going to be a whole series of designs on these tenor ukes. Uh, old fruit crate art, some cool vibrant pop art type things, old cigar art, um, um, western themes, Asian themes, Hawaiian themes, all sorts of good stuff going on in here. Because you can of course play all sorts of types of music on a uke. There are some you don't hear so much, like you don't generally hear a lot of Irish music played on the ukulele. The ukulele. I play Irish music on my uke. Well, see. see? The, the, well, the ukulele historically didn't m play much of a role in Ireland's music, but there's no reason you can't. You don't hear any Scottish music on the ukulele. Thrash metal. <laughs> Scottish. Well, Scottish no, no, music. It's more because it's it's depressing. <laughs> um, yeah. You're trying to. I can't. There's an A minor. Well, I just came down from the Isle of Sky. I'm not very big and I'm awfully shy. I see shout as I go by. Donald wears his trousers at the wind blow high. Let the wind blow low. Head through the streets in the hill tango. Oh, the lassie say hello. Donald wears his trousers. So, yeah, nice. I guess grumpy, grumpy Scottish songs on a uke. Maybe <laughs> not so much. Maybe not so much. But all sorts of good music can be played on them. So... Uh, I was just at my desk, I was trying to pick out um, the tune to an old Western American song, Red River Valley, uh, and I happened to have that in my tablature database, and I can output it in tab for ukulele. So, uh, look for a ukulele songbook coming down the pike, hopefully sooner rather than later. <laughs> um, one cool thing about the tenor uke, 17-inch scale, which 
happens to be the same scale that I used for my hobo fiddles. Standard ukulele tuning for soprano, concert, and tenor ukes, the, the three smaller sizes, has what's called a re-entrant, that's how I pronounce it, re-entrant tuning, where what would normally be the lowest, bassiest string is instead higher. So it's a high G, then it drops down to C, E, A. And that kind of gives it that unique ukulele sound. Now a cool thing about this scale length is instead of having that high G on there, which limits your overall range of songs you can play, you can put a lower G on there, a wound, basically a, an, a classical acoustic guitar D string, you can put on there and put it to a low G, which opens up some more tonal range for an instrument. So very excited about the tenor uke line, the Vignette Series Tenor Ukuleles. Now available. This one right here is now listed on the CB Giddy site. Uh, there will be more printed varieties coming soon. The necks, if you want to build your own, are available. Yeah, buddy. All right, why don't we d run some videos? Uh, tell us which ones we got in the queue there, Nick. Uh, well, you know, first one we've got is, I believe, our buddy Kale. All right, Kale at Pornis Studios on deck. Yep, and he's actually, I'm going to share a link here, he's got a first Texas builder swap. Oh, nice. Out there. Um, it's uh, here. Sure. I don't think your mic, I don't think you're turned up over here, Nick. Oh, well, then there you go. Say something. Something. Can All you right. Can you test. hear me now? Can, can you hear me now? Yes. There, now All I right. can hear you. Jeez. All right, so uh, we've got first up with Kale uh, with liquor, beer, wine. We've got Ragged Butt right this time, the actual. The one we meant to run last week from the Green right Heron. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he's playing, uh, Scott's playing my uh, wagon wheel banjo in that one, just playing the heck out of it. So We've got one from, and a one minute video from uh, YouTube. Not YouTube, excuse me. Uh, Instagram. All right, very good. So we'll be back with you in several minutes-ish. Yeah, seven. Well, sure, why not? It's Giddy Gang Show on... Howdy folks and happy Sunday morning from Cleveland, Ohio. You see right over here is the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame protruding off the skyline in the distance. By the way, this is about as close as I can get to it uh, because they have a PA that plays loud music 24-7 and I can actually still hear it right here. Um, hopefully it won't come through on the video, but that's about as close as I can get. But you know what, just about, what, a month ago I was at the birthplace of the blues, and this site claims to be the birthplace of rock and roll. And I know what you're thinking, you're like, wait a minute, Sun Studios claims to be the birthplace of rock and roll, you would be correct. But the reason that the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is here in Cleveland is because this was the location of uh, DJ Alan Freed, who helped popularize the genre back in the day and really make it what it was. So therefore, Cleveland claims the uh, birth of rock and roll. I don't care. You know what rock and roll has led to? A lot of hard drinking. So we're going to do a little liquor, beer, and wine. We're going to do the song liquor, beer, and wine, not drink. Hey, you know what I mean. Well, liquor, beer, and wine on a Sunday morning. Well, the doctor says I'm living on precious borrowed time. With all the
Sunday morning from Cleveland. Some good stuff there. I've uh, been talking with uh, Scott and Betsy. We are going to figure out how, in some way, to get them back on the show, whether it's remotely or here in on the Jukes Shack stage. Yeah, buddy. And as Jim, as Jimbo Burt just pointed out, most Sundays, they Sunday mornings at 11, they do go live from in front of their lovely uh, wood paneled wall down there in their home in Exeter or Kingston, where the heck they are. But not that far away, so if you like what you hear there, search up Green Heron on Facebook, like and follow their page, and you'll get the notifications. So without further ado now, the camera is going to zoom in on our good friend Dan Woodman over here, and he's going to give us a way song. Alright. Alright. This is a song I've been wanting to play for a long time, but every time I played the song, it would speed up. 
<laughs> and then I listen to the original song, and I'm like, well, the original song speeds up, so what am I worried about? <laughs> so, here we go. The new mother cries Her placenta falls to the floor The angel opens her eyes Confusion sets in All right, take two. <laughs> I just remembered I gotta hit a B minor. Don't worry, we'll, we'll take all that out in post. post. We'll take it out in post. Lightning crashes, the new mother cries. The placenta falls to the floor. Lightning crashes, an old mother dies. Her intentions fall to the floor. The angel closes her eyes. The confusion that was her. Oh, now feel it coming back again Like a rolling thunder chasing the wind Forces pull from the center of the earth again I can feel it Lightning crashes you mother this moment she's been waiting for The angel opens her eyes Pale blue colored iris Presents a circle with the glory out to hide Oh, now feel it coming back again Like a rolling thunder chasing the wind Forces pull from the center of the earth again I can feel it I can feel it I can feel it I 
I can feel it coming back again Like a rolling thunder chasing the wind Forces pull from the center of the earth again I can feel it I can feel it So what we should do now, a couple more videos, we've got, uh, what do we have? <laughs> we've got Our a jam next. session with me, you, Glenn, Oh Harley. yeah, Blast from the Past, an old Ooh. jam back in the old days. I'm not quite so. sure what you call the song, but it's you and Glenn and you're singing a two, uh, two wayfaring stranger. Alright, sounds good. Alright, so we're going to run these and then I'm going to head over to the how-to bench and Deke and I are going to share and some insight, hopefully, and ask for some of yours as well. Thank you. 
So I wrote the words to this one, put them to an old tune, the tune from Wayfair and Stranger. It's been around for a long time, long time on that one. Sold well under two million copies. <laughs> well under. Come in again. So I wrote the words to this one and put them to an old, old traditional tune that is better known from the song Wayfair and Stranger. Been around for a long time. This one tells the story of a man out on the road, got to keep moving, can't stop, can't slow down, can't settle down. It's got the wanderlust. from the past, Sarah. Somebody was asking if Glenn was visiting. Unfortunately not. As far as we know, though, he's still doing well down there in the mountains of eastern Tennessee. I believe Farley's doing well also, so we are glad for them. Uh, over here at the how-to bench now with Mr. Dan D. Caldwell, and we're going to talk a little bit... Oh, there are some questions that were asked about the Tenor Uke. First, 
uh, steel strings using that neck. Yes, technically possible, but with caution, uh, those necks are made from poplar, which is a hardwood, but uh, not one of the strongest of the hardwoods. So if you go throw in four steel strings on there, especially the bigger wound ones, and crank them up tight, it's going to be asking more of that neck mm -hmm. than it was designed to do. It's designed to be a ukulele neck with nylon strings. Um, I believe Keith Rerick was asking about uh, baritone ukes. It's certainly on the radar, but kind of want to see if the tenors do anything first before moving on to the baritones. Also, left-handedness and ukulele kits. Um, this, I don't know if you could see, this ukulele and the kit also that we derive, not quite from this, but it'll have a floating bridge. It won't have the ukulele style bridge where it, it's mounted to the soundboard and the strings kind of tie to it. It's a floating bridge with a tailpiece, so it should work for both right and left-handed building mm -hmm. with a bit of other mashing about. Um, Bill Nolan saying more blasts from the past. Sounds good to me because by God we got a lot of video uh, we can pull from and it makes it easier to fill an hour. Yeah. It? People like it, we like it, everybody wins. All right. Not four years of material. It's four years. Showing up on the computer. God help us. <laughs> um, all right. So what are we over here to talk about today? A fairly uh, focused topic of bending metal. Effectively bending metal parts for use on cigar box guitars. In front of him here, Dan has one of our, that's our mountain tenor kit. And Nick, if, if I don't know if you got a zoom set up for where Dan's standing. Don't worry, they're very durable kits, folks. Very durable. Stand up to a lot Can of Can you kill juice. a mule with them? Well, I haven't <laughs> tried myself, but you could probably be a, uh, a producer with it. Uh, Kabong. Uh, <laughs> remember El Kabong? You probably remember El Kabong. No, You're older I than I am. Don't know, man. <laughs> you got nothing. I don't know. All right, anyway, so we've got we go. a stainless steel tailpiece on here. It comes with the kit. It's one of our barrel house style tailpieces and when uh, assembling this kit you it comes just as a straight i don't have one of those particular but it just comes as a, a flat piece and you got to mount it and bend it and if you've ever tried doing this and i actually have a cigar box here so i can kind of demonstrate you take your your tailpiece you figure out where you want it to end up on the front of the box you know say your bridge is here so you want about yay much, we'll say on this one, to the bottom of the slots to show. So normally you'd use a ruler, you know, you do some measuring and make sure you get it all even and straight. But for the sake of demonstration, today we're not going to do any of that. We're just we're not going to pre-drill either. We're just going to mash. Let's do it to it. Just going to mash some screws in here. Three of them. So, once you get it mounted, now, I should have said, this is actually a little more advanced way to get a good bend. Mount it first, then bend it. Because, if you just take, here, here's, I'd say, the worst way to bend a metal tailpiece to fit. Just like that. Like that. Just with fingers, you end up with quite what would be called a radius here. The, the curve of the bend is very broad almost like a half inch radius on that Man, which when mounted on a box it's going to stick up it's not going to fit clean and snug onto that corner which is what i generally want so just bending by hand not recommended unless it doesn't bother you and you know do what works do what's easiest do what works for you mounting it first allows you to get a tighter bend just with using your thumbs still you can work it around that, and I know you probably can't see uh, from there, but now there's a much tighter radius on this. It's a little crooked, but you can kind of adjust it. And if you know, if you've ever bent metal, you don't want to come back and forth a bunch of times because it will start to weaken and eventually break. Um, so the radius on this bend, I'd say it's about an eighth maybe three sixteenths of an inch. Much so tighter to the wood. Much tighter to the wood. It sits a lot flatter, a lot more cleanly against there. But there are, of course, ways. Now, 
I don't know. Do you use this kind of tailpiece very much, or are you more What's of a hinge up? guy? I'd use hinge. I use pieces of scrap metal. Which, um, have you ever used a fork? No. I, I see some people do some cool things with forks that curl up the tines and mm -hmm. get that mounted on there. It can look pretty neat. But I've used all sorts of different scrap metal and uh, this little baby. Well, we're going to get to that next, aren't we? <laughs> I, actually, I was going to start with the fanciest method, which most people in their home workshops won't have. That's the bending brake, uh, made for making precise, very tight, neat bends in sheet metal. Um, but we're going to talk about I, you know, I can demonstrate that. Might as well get it out of the way. The bending brake, made for bending sheet metal. This is a small bench top version, a 12 inch bending brake. So with one of these basically, you can still see there, you can see the important thing. Um, it's got a, a lever over here. Can you move the camera a little more this way, Nick? Just to make sure, there I am. So it's got a, a lever here which raises and lowers this top piece. So basically you would figure out where you want your bend to be on your tailpiece and you'd mark it with a, uh, a pencil or whatever. And then you would feed that in, get it nice and even, and then clamp it down oh, right there to where it's clamped. And then this bottom piece pivots. I'm going to try not pull the whole bench over. This bench it. was not built for uh, metalworking. So you bend this up to the degree that you want your piece to be bent and it will go a little past 90 I think it's like a hundred and something degrees but when you pull that out of there if you're able to see a very nice tight tight bend about as good as you can get it I'd say maybe a sixteenth of an inch sixteenth so. of an inch radius maybe even a thirty second that's about as good as you're going to get without professional stamping machinery, I'd say. But who has a sheet? We happen to have one because we use it for other things, but most folks don't. So a decent alternative, so this one's pretty much, I could reflat bend in the same one. You can also use your bending brake kind of as a makeshift <laughs> press. Ah, I've got others. I'll use another one. So a good alternative to that is if you have a bench vise. This is a small uh, kind of a portable bench vise um, that, that pivots in various ways. So for the sake of it being visible, I gotta see how he's got us zoomed here. Turn it about like that. So you can use a vise. You would again, you'd mark where you want your bend to be. You'd put it in, try to make sure it's nice and even. And then once it's clamped in place, it's kind of like uh, when it's on the box, you can just use your hand or your thumbs to, uh, you know, you, but you want to try to apply pressure as tight down against where the bend is going to be as you can. Because if you just push from up here, you're going to end up with a lot more of a curve than you want. So you want to get down there nice and tight, or if you've got a piece of scrap wood, mm -hmm. You can put that piece of scrap wood right down there tight, boom, it right over. And you can even, another good thing about the vise, you can take a hammer at this point yeah. and really get that nice tight angle. If you don't want to mar your metal, this is stainless With so wood. it stands up. You can use a, a block of, of wood, kind of as a, a hammering coal, and you can get her down there pretty nice and tight. Now, maybe in a future episode, the hammering of metal ways to mark and texture metal and discolor it or, or antique it mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about in an episode to come but using a vise it's almost almost as tight as the bending brake got it maybe just a, a 30 second more but definitely good enough Boom. good enough for a uh, a cigar box guitar and, and any other kind of guitar I would say <clears throat> Um, just another example of the bending brake in action. This is a 7 inch aluminum disc that I printed a, an eagle and flag motif on to test it. Um, it's actually a pizza pan separator. To bend wider pieces of metal effectively, uh, sheet metal, you either need a bending brake or build a more elaborate 
version of what I'm going to show you in a minute. But just to show what you would do with this, you'd load, you know, ideally you'd figure out where you wanted to bend it. This is just a test piece, so I'm not as worried about it. So why would you want to ever bend a wider piece of sheet metal when building a cigar box guitar? Daniel! For all sorts of things. <laughs> Surprise questions. I have seen, not recently, but in the past, I, exactly. If you wanted to kind of make a metal topper for your cigar box and have it extend down over the sides, you would need to take a piece of brass or aluminum or whatever and bend it both ways, really, you know, and then boom, it go down. So uh, that's definitely... For pick guard or... For uh, fixing mess ups, I know nobody out there ever I've messes never up. I've made a mistake guitars, myself, but, you know. But I've heard of people. Who if it have. happens, no, no. you can well, cover that up. Board up, right side up, you know. It's, it's... <laughs> all that good stuff. So there are also special pliers. I own a pair. I couldn't find them before the show, but they've got wide, flat mm -hmm. grips, and you can use those to bend metal. Um, if you have, this is the call out, the call to action, if you have a clever homemade way of bending sheet metal, if you could show us like a short video of it in action, uh, we'd love to see it and to share it here on the show. Jimbo Bird asking how much this is, um, I don't know. If you got on grizzly.com and search for 12 inch, it's a model G7147, 12 inch handbrake. Seems like it was a hundred and something a few years ago. I can't remember why I actually... I had some crazy project, some crazy thing in mind that we need, would just need needed that tool. I can't remember what it was. Anyway. Speaking of brakes. Speaking of bending brakes. Before the show, I was like, I want to make a simple little tool that kind of works like a bending brake. So... I'm just going to come up close to the camera and hopefully you'll still be able to hear me. This is three pieces of scrap poplar, cutoffs from the necks we make. You can see I've got two of the pieces yep, connected together with hinges here, bump, bump, bump. and then a third piece screwed on on one side. And I had to make divots here so it would fit over the hinges. So the idea with this, if I get another bendable thing here. Not one that's all that thick because <laughs> this is just a little hand job. A uh, what? little <laughs> hand tool. <laughs> Shut up, Dan. <laughs> what kind of show is this? Um, one of a kind. For a quick, a quick and easy metal bending. So quick you take your tailpiece. <laughs> trying to do a show. Oh, You're turning right. all red. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, you'd insert your tailpiece into it in between this uh, piece that's attached on one end and then while holding that tight this other hinge piece Just bend it and it does all right maybe a eighth of an inch radius on there and if it's not quite enough you can have another go at it it's not the handiest or most effective uh, bending tool but it's to be fair, to be fair, to it, be fair, it only took me about five minutes to make. So, um, I would like to see. I know Jim Burt has made some videos and shared some videos of some of the, the the tricks and jigs he uses in his shop. So, if anybody has a so clever, Louis. Louis's got a couple of. Really oh, good that's ones true. There. Oh, the I still don't have the drill bit size and gauge. No. One of these days, I'm gonna smarten up. Stick the handbrake in the vise. True, Sue, but if you've got the vise already, you probably don't need to mess around with the handbrake. But, and definitely don't mess around with the hand job. Laurel Caldwell says, clean up your act, Clean up Daniel. your act, on, Daniel boys. Caldwell. <laughs> this is a family show, you know. All right, Not so there's, <laughs> there's a few ways to bend thin sheet metal. Now, I should say, I've got one tailpiece here in my little box cut from brass, and this is an old, old one I would gotten from Mike Lowe uh, way back in the day. Water jet cut from, that's at least a sixteenth that of an inch thick. thick. 
And even though it's brass, I don't think I'd tackle that with, with, with this. Poplar brake. No. Uh, Mike Kinsey says Harbor Freight has a small metal bending brake which would likely be cheaper. I suspect you are right. Things on Harbor Freight usually are cheaper. And if you don't mind replacing it every couple months, <laughs> by God, it's hell of value. All right, so that's what we've got for you. Thank you, Dan, for mostly hey, standing there listening to me blab. Hopefully next Trying week. Trying to embarrass you <laughs> as much as I can. <laughs> it worked this week. Mm -hmm. Hopefully next week he'll... Uh, have his segment ready on on treating yes metal metal, metal uh, etching metal aging all the good things all that good alchemy right. so we've got one more video for you now which i've already forgotten what it is fat knuckle freddy fat knuckle freddy a good uh, friend from up in maine that we got to meet two years ago at marty's uh, maine it's been two years well there wasn't one last year oh, that's right dang year and a half <laughs> wasted another hour of your Friday with us and we're glad you did. These nylon strings haven't been on long so they require con uh, frequent tuning. Mm. All right so this has been the Giddy Gang Show. So let's do it a little different style. Usually it's bluesy. I'm gonna do it more in a ukulele style this week. Don't wear the grass skirt, please. <laughs> well, it's the Giddy Gang Show. It's the Power Box Nation TV. I said the Giddy Gang Show on the Power Box Nation TV. And we came to you live from CB Giddy. Well, all you need is a stick and a box and four strings sometimes. Singing all you need is a stick and a box and some strings. Well, you put them all together, you know they're gonna ring. And we come to you live every Friday afternoon at three. Very nearly. Then we come to you live every Friday afternoon at three. And if we don't see you, how sad we will be. I can't do any breaks on the ukulele. I can barely do them on the Starbucks guitar. That's okay, we're just gonna wish them a happy weekend. Happy, 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 happy. Safe and sound and 